So we're gonna hit this place, Clouds? Why the hell not? What's up, everybody? This is Fred Rachani of TSC, here to give you guys my thoughts on Cyberpunk 2077 on PC, CD Projekt Red's action RPG open world game, CDPR is the company behind the critically acclaimed Witcher 3, and recently released a massive update, adding a number of new features and bug fixes after well over a year since the game's heavily criticized release. So how does the game fare right now? Let's dive in. Without giving too much away, Cyberpunk 2077 allows you to choose three paths, a male or female version of the main character V. You could be a corpo who becomes a snitch or a rat, a nomad who, well, roams around, and a street kid who hangs with the worst of them. For my original playthrough, I went through the corpo route. For our next-gen review coming soon, I chose the street kid. Any of these paths will alter some dialogue, but the general narrative remains. You have the opportunity of a lifetime. The major leagues, baby! Pull off this heist and you're rich. Note. Things don't go smoothly, at least not as they seem. Eventually, you somehow, some way, are linked, literally and figuratively, to a rock star turned terrorist, Johnny Silverhand, played by the incredible actor Keanu Reeves, who hates the man, and specifically the man, Arasaka. Take a shot every time he says Arasaka. Now keep in mind, when you first start playing this game, you're not immediately going to encounter Johnny Silverhand, aka Keanu Reeves. So if you're expecting it from the jump, no. You're gonna have to spend at least a couple hours first doing the main missions. Maybe you wanna do some of the tutorials. And then eventually you get to the saga with Johnny Silverhand and that's when things get really interesting. Once you encounter Johnny, it gets turned up a notch. How do you take down the man? Will they take you down? What's Johnny's end game? Can V survive all of this? How will he or she survive this? That all remains to be seen. Little something called intuition, V. Never heard of it? Oh, so what you meant to say was you're full of shit. Got it. If that story sounds interesting to you, I concur. In fact, if it wasn't for the story and the fantastic voice acting, I would not have stuck with this game because man, there are some issues even a year or two later. Night City looks fantastic and has a very unique aesthetic. It's definitely busier than your typical open world game. It almost feels like a real city. It could also be a real challenge getting around with all of the technical issues. While PC did not have as many issues as console players, I found the gameplay to be clunky at best, especially when it comes to the gunplay. There's a lot of dialogue in this game, which is cool, except there were several times where there'd be a glitch that would almost break my game. The infamous Ripper Doc glitch at the beginning of the game, when I couldn't advance at the early part of the story, seems to be resolved now, but at the time, pretty annoying. Even now, fast travel sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, requiring me to restart the game. Sometimes there's some weird, flashy things on the characters that aren't part of the actual aesthetic, and it's the graphics. And then in the later part of the game, without giving too much away, you're supposed to get a call from an important character, only for you not to get it without skipping time or restarting. Yes. Over a year later, you still have some of that BS. You also have the weird voice levels of V that sometimes you have to manually adjust. And on top of that, the frame rate rarely, if ever, maintains 60 FPS, even with the freaking 3090 video card. And no, I don't have these issues with any other games that came out around the same time as Cyberpunk or present day. You could say I was like a frustrated parent with this game. I love the story. The characters are super unique and cool looking, but mechanically, technically, eh, it's whatever. The game could still be better, to say the least. Now with the recent update, driving and walking does feel smoother. Gunplay is still a little clunky and not at the level of a great first person shooter by any means. If you're somebody like me who plays Destiny 2 and then you go to shooting in Cyberpunk, yeah, you will see a difference and not in a good way. With the update though, you can rent apartments, you get new romantic scenarios of partners and outfits. Nice. Other aspects of the game that are still intact are the hacking, which is one of my favorite parts, the skill tree system, which is decent, and the necessary but kind of annoying brain dance function that lets you explore memories to uncover clues from the past. You can also customize your character's wardrobe, and that's nice and all, but it doesn't really mean much if you're mostly in first person. Just my opinion. So you might be wondering after all this talk, is this game truly worth buying on PC? Let's get to the verdict. Content. I give Cyberpunk 2077 a 9. This is where Cyberpunk 2077 shines. So many memorable, interesting characters. Johnny Silverhand, Pan Am Palmer, Rogue, Dexter Deshaun, the Arasakas, the vibrant yet dark Night City. 
you really feel like you're in a live action Netflix or HBO series in this game. Sometimes I even get lost just staring at the views. Technical issues aside, I'd strongly recommend taking your time with the story. Learn about these characters. Do as many side missions as possible before beating the main game. And not just to level up, but to learn more about Night City. Also, Samurai and the rest of the Cyberpunk soundtrack absolutely rules. Gameplay. I give Cyberpunk a 6. Not bad, but not great. Definitely not earth-shattering as hyped, but depending how you play, you can still have a lot of fun. Looking back, I really wish I leveled up my hacking skills because you can actually have some more fun distracting enemies and short-circuiting them than shooting them in the face. Sometimes. Graphically, I give the game a 7. I really wanted to go higher because it does look nice, but the technical issues had me bring it down a few notches. Now the cutscenes and the moments of dialogue graphically look fantastic most of the time. It's when you're moving around a lot and in combat when things get a little clunky, a little slow, and a little awkward. Again, for a game to not be able to consistently run at 60 frames per second over a year later on a high-powered PC like mine, it's kind of crazy. It's not a deal breaker, but it is somewhat disappointing for sure. Overall, TSC gives Cyberpunk 2077 on PC a 7 out of 10. This current version of Cyberpunk 2077 is not a bad game at all, but it's not as smooth and as seamless as it should be nearly two years later. But where Cyberpunk truly shines is in the story and the characters who make this an incredible incredibly memorable and at times emotional experience. Nobody can hold a candle to Judy. She cuts virtues like they were diamonds. Damn straight. There's great potential here for DLC, a sequel, and hell, even a future TV series. That's how much I love these characters. The problem isn't the writing, isn't the acting, isn't the scenarios, although I know that's subjective. It's the mechanics and the technical aspect. I think CDPR got it as right as they could up to this point, but it's pretty damn clear this game would have been even better with at least an extra year of development. That being said, if you can get this game for less than full price, let's just say $29.99, even $40, bucks, definitely go for it. Even with all my issues with this game, I still find myself coming back for more every now and then, whether it be playing the alternate endings, finding new romantic scenarios, or just raising hell with my boy Johnny Silverhand. If you'd like to buy Cyberpunk 2077, just click the links in the description. Full disclosure, as an affiliate, we get a small cut from your purchase. And if you enjoyed this review, like, share, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more updates like this. If you've unfortunately ran into some glitches, we have a whole Cyberpunk playlist covering all those glitches and their fixes. Easy for me to say. We'll also be doing a review of the next-gen version on Xbox Series X, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, everybody, as always, enjoy the games and watch out for those creeps from Arasaka. Johnny, did you see what happened? Something feels off here. You don't say.